Welcome to the GCN Tech Show. Coming up this week, we've got new tires, new inner tubes, a new Pinarello, Zwift news, and something about some Shimano cranks. And our main talking point is what is the most overrated bike tech? Well, we're going to find out. Now this week we're talking about the most overrated bike tech. Now you've just come back from a mega holiday in the French Alps, yeah, riding the Alpe d'Huez and stuff. Um, I went on a similar trip with my brother back in June, mm -hmm. and we yeah rode a similar. Here are some photos of our holidays. <laughs> Now, the reason um, we're talking about overrated bike tech is because, well, we enjoy going away doing these amazing adventures, experiences, and like going on and just taking it all in, basically. For us, it's the reason why we ride our bikes anyway. Yeah, like having those adventures in unforgettable locations. And for the price of experiences like that, that's often the cost of like some of this bike tech we're going to talk about. Yeah, it's wild. Yeah, so you could go and ride like Alpe d'Huez. You can go and ride the Stelvio Pass, things that are just unforgettable life experiences. And it's for us, if it was either or, I'd rather spend my money doing that than maybe buying some a more stuff. expensive thing <laughs> that yeah. doesn't necessarily give you a big performance benefit. So. Well, we should get into it, shouldn't we? Because yeah. we've made a list. Yeah. <laughs> So the first thing um, I think we should speak about, probably lots of people think it's going to be on the list, oversized pulley wheels. I feel like if this is Family Fortunes, or then that's top answer. That is it's top like answer. blinging on the top, or whatever they call it in America, I can't remember the translation. Can we have a sound effect to represent it? What is, the, what is it Family Fortunes called in America? Family Feud or something is it called? Someone will let us know in it's the It's called something different. But let, do let us know in the comments, because we can't think of it. <laughs> Um, so oversized pulley wheels, yes, they look really bling. Some people think that they're the key to unlocking all of their speed and potential and power. However, um, the reality of it is, in terms of like a performance upgrade, it's pretty marginal, I mean, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, like so, you know, things like the, you know, the, the the biggest brands that make them, there are like fractions of a watt saving in drivetrain yeah. efficiency, but. You know, they're typically like 300 pounds, euros, dollars. Like, if you yeah. get the aero ceramic speed <laughs> mad. one, looks incredible, but it's like 500, 600. I think, I think there might be more. That's the price of a holiday. <laughs> yeah, I didn't spend that much last time I was away. Yeah, like that is that is loads, right? Like, yeah. And then, you know, while we're on the topic of that, I think ceramic bearings, particularly if we're putting ceramic bearings. Like in general. Well, people put ceramic bearings in their headsets. And like. No, I don't get that. Cool, it's cool, <laughs> but like it, they, co they cost a huge amount, you know. And and again, ceramic bearings in your you know bottom bracket and in your wheels and stuff. Yeah, it's gonna save like tiny, tiny, you know, fractions of watts. Yeah. But like there is a there is a benefit there. And if you're chasing every single last second, it's the cherry on top of the cake, as we always say. Yeah. But again, for like what it costs yeah. and what you can. What, what other things you could buy? Well, I like, think this is like the kind of crux of it is the fact of to make it overrated. It's the the fact that people are kind of like idolizing this certain piece of equipment mm. or bit of tech and going, "This is this is going to revolutionize my cycling. I'm going to really commit to spending all this money on it." I think really in your head, it's it's like you that's convinced yourself that that is the the key to. But I think I think people place far great too greater emphasis on that. You know, I've do, been like, there and I've done it. I've placed a lot of emphasis on bits that really don't matter. You know, you think like, well, I have as well, but <laughs> yeah. like, you know, you think, I just, if I just pedal one watt harder. Yeah. Every, come on. Yeah. You can get one more watt out and then you've, well, you didn't need it. Then. Well, the argument is you can get one more watt out, but if you get that one more watt out and you've saved a watt as well, it's going to be better. I don't, yeah, well. That, well, that's the trade off. Yeah, I know, it? but it's that thing of if you, if, if if I went to you, right, you can save half a watt. Yeah. Right? And just ride at home around up Banner Down. <laughs> yeah. Or in the rain. Or you can go to Mallorca. And, yeah. and not save a half a watt. 
I would definitely be going to Mallorca. Do you know why? Because my commute in this morning, I basically cycled in a monsoon. I know. Me and Chloe were so grumpy about it. Um, anyway, we can extend our overrated tech a little bit further into the realms of the uber lightweight category, which I think... Anything super lightweight. Yeah, it can apply to pretty much every single part of your bike. The reason I think we're going to make this crazy lightweight tech overrated is when it gets pushed to the limit. Mm. We think we, when the lightweight element starts to creep up the priority list of manufacturers ahead of things like functionality. Well, that's it. Because <laughs> like weight as well, like super lightweight things often aren't very durable. No. And people place far too much emphasis again on like, well, weight is fundamentally overrated, full stop. Like watts matter more, you know, five watts worth more than a kilo on outdoors for most people. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, so, so people place huge emphasis on a, like a wheel set or something that's like 100 grams lighter. Yeah. You know, you could buy bottle cages that are, say, like 15 grams compared to bottle cages that are 30 grams. And they're going to be like 10 times the price. Yeah. <laughs> and it's fifth, like, you know, you've saved 30 grams, which is like absolutely nothing. And the bottle cage probably isn't as durable or secure in many instances. Or functional. Like, I've got some... Really cool, super lightweight bottle cage on my bike. They hold my bottle secure, but they're actually a little bit tricky to get the bottle in and out because it like grips them so tightly. Yeah, I'm like, well, the five quid ones would probably be a bit, bit easier. Yeah, and, <laughs> and I think like, well, you know, we go back to sort of the Mallorca example. Yeah, one of my favourite climbs of all, Sacalobra. Right? Did you happen to go up there in under thirty minutes? I did. Kaching. Um, <laughs> but like that, you know, that was something I was, you know, always aiming to do. But like. Even then, like a kilo, it, it's a lot less than what I think people would think. So for me, when I've modelled it on Sacalobra, so I, I know this because I've done it, but um, it's worth 18 seconds. A kilo. A kilo. Yeah. It's worth 18 seconds on Sacalobra. And people are maybe spending thousands of pounds to get 100 grams at best. Yeah, but the, but, but the thing, well, like, okay, if you look at, say, you know, the difference between... Um, bikes that are a kilo difference in weight. So, like, say if you bought the the top end, like Pinarello F, yeah. right, versus like a 105 Di2 equipped model, F7, yeah, yeah, yeah something like that, right? That's typically going to be, as a rule of thumb, like a kilo difference in weight limit. Yeah, but you, but there's often like five. Six grand, sometimes even more difference in the cost of those two bikes. That's not a cycling holiday, that's a full blown family holiday. <laughs> well, yeah, that's a family holiday, but then that's like, you know, so it's like, well, okay, you're gonna be 18 seconds slower. Yeah. But if it's a choice between having like that and actually going and, well, that's that's like a whole, that's a whole year of like, right, you can go ride the, go ride the Stelvio, you go ride Alpe d'Huez, you go to Mallorca, ride up Sacalobra. Yeah. And if it was the choice between those things, and yeah. like either doing them or not doing them. Oh, like yeah. I th I actually think um, mentioning different bikes and stuff like that. I actually think super bling wheels are slightly overrated. I mean, great pieces of tech and equipment. Love riding them. Will enhance the ride and whatnot. But I think what happens is people upgrade their bike with new fancy wheels, and at the same time they coincide that with getting new fancy tires. Mm. And I think in people's heads. The big advantage has come from the wheels, but I think the big advantage has come from the tyres. And the wheels have just combined in with it. And yeah. it's really, if you'd have kept your cheaper wheels and then gone all out on the tyres, you'd have got a lot of the savings. Yeah. yeah. I think it comes down to, yeah, like, like, yeah, like tyres, definitely not overrated. Yeah. Um, like 105, definitely not overrated. I'm going to say Ultegra, not overrated. I think we can put in like top tier, top group, tier group sets are overrated. Yeah. Now, like Jura Ace. Absolutely amazing, super record, amazing, ETAP access, like they are amazing. And they yeah. are the best. And they, they yeah. do have marginal gains in terms of their lighter and you know, things like the, the Jura Ace chain is has yeah. better coatings on it. Yeah. Um yeah, more Josh efficient. from Silka was saying, yeah, it's it's the most efficient uh, chain. It's definitely more efficient than the lower tier Shimano chains. That said, you know, we've shown in the recent 105 mechanical launch video. There's like 200 grams difference between like 105 and Ultegra, and then like 200 grams difference between that and Jura Ace. So it's not even a kilo. And it's that classic thing of, yeah, Jura Ace is typically twice the price of Ultegra. Like historically, it's roughly yeah. been that. 
But it's, it's, I always say this, it's not twice the performance. <laughs> yeah, well, it's not. It's not possible. Yeah. So you're not even, you know, you'd say if you were using Ultegra on, like, Sacalobra, it's not even yeah. a kilo difference. It's like 200 grams difference. Yeah, that's wild. It's I'm like, going to throw out there, I think 99% of people, if they're riding it and didn't know the difference, which one was on each bike, you'd struggle to tell. Yeah. I think you really yeah, would. I think you would. Yeah, their levers are the same shape and stuff. Yeah, what else we got on the list? Um, oh, I actually added this on, was wireless and electronic tech. Sort of similar to when you're talking about top tier groups. So the stuff's really good, but you can have some frustrations with it um, when you've got connection issues and stuff like that. It starts to become like, well, I just wish I had the original stuff. Mechanical stuff, it can't go wrong. You haven't got to charge it up. You haven't got to have like connection dropouts. Yeah, no, I think wireless tech is good. When it makes okay. your life easier. We can agree to disagree. Yeah. All but right. I think overall, the stuff that's not overrated is is anything that like enables you to just enjoy the best things about cycling, yeah. but but not like take away from the experience. So you'd say like you can go out and ride up amazing mountains with something like 105 and it's so functional and it works so like flawlessly you're not going to be like missing gears or going, oh, I don't have enough gears or like that gear shift was rubbish or my brakes aren't good enough. You know, it's yeah. all, it works, you yeah. know? So anything that like, like works. functional. Yeah, anything that's really functional and works and doesn't distract you from the amazing experience and freedom you're, you're having in a beautiful place. Yeah. Because that is fundamentally like the, the main reason yeah. why, that's the most thing I enjoy the most about riding my bike. Yeah, I think we're quick to talk about tech in terms of like lightweight or amazing or the best but tech is also functional and yeah. that's what makes it really good and that's the that is the, the number one thing like yeah if you're chasing like every last second on a summit finish in the tour de france i'm not well yeah <laughs> my 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 ego is sometimes but like i'm working on that but like it, fundamentally even if i couldn't you know have the lightest stuff i it's the I want to just be in you the amazing You want to be movies. reliable. And I just want to enjoy to riding my bike outside. Well, okay. I'm glad we've got that off our chest. And the most important thing is that I really want to hear from everybody their thoughts on this. What bit of tech do you think is overrated? And what kind of tech do you think is like really crucial and functional? You can let us know in the comments section down below. And the best ones and best comments, we'll read them out next week. I'm sure there's going to be lots. Also, next week is um, Tech on Tour. We're going to be away, aren't we? Yeah, we're, um, we're going to Mallorca to shoot some videos. Oh, yeah. So, um, yeah. We'll be tech there. Tech show will be from there. Right, hot tech next. Boom. Uh, first up, hot tech this week. Pirelli have updated and launched some new TPU inner tubes. Boom. So, uh, I've got the original one here. This is the Pirelli Smart Tube. Um, they've now brought out the Smart Tube Evo, which Love it. is still super light, like 35 grams or so, um, but is now 5% lower in rolling resistance. Yeah, we've got an updated formula to the TPU, which is thermoplastic polyurethane. Gains. You're wondering. Gains. Also <laughs> available in different uh, valve lengths, so 40, 60, or 80. Um, that's not all, though. They've yeah. launched a Smart Tube X. So this is still like a polyurethane tube, so it is a oh, well, TPU tube, so yeah. it's it's lightweight, compact, and you know packs down to like nothing. Increased puncture protection. But yes, it's now three times thicker, so it's it's designed for like gravel use, high volume tires, like e-bike use. Yeah, a yeah. bit more durable, that, that sort of thing. So even though we're saying it's three times thicker, it's three times thicker than the already thinner TPU tube. It's still more compact and lightweight than a standard butyl tube. Yeah, and yeah. although we have just been going on about how lightweight <laughs> is overrated, yeah. I would argue that in terms of weight savings on your bike... Per pound? Yeah, pos yeah, like TP or, or dollar or euro. Uh, TPU inner tube is probably one of the most cost-effective ways to do it. Or Zimbabwean dollars. Yeah, and rolling resistance gains. There you go. Um, All round good stuff then. More tyre tech. Yes, more tyre tech next. Um, Hutchinson have released a new tubeless tyre. It's called the Challenger. Kind of like an all-seasons winter training tyre. This is a tubeless tyre and they are saying that it doesn't require any sealant through the use of a butyl liner on the inside of the tyre. As well as like, a load of added puncture protection. And they're saying... Um, up to a 10,000 kilometre life on the tyre. So I'm, I'm guessing this isn't like a performance no. tyre. 
No, thing along the lines, like what I said, like kind of like your winter tyre, commuting tyre, a little bit more all seasons, all purpose, heavy duty, because they're going big on puncture protection and durability here. That's getting more in line with <clears throat> like automotive tyres, not yeah. just like in the longevity of it, but the fact that your car tyre is tubeless, mm -hmm. but it doesn't have yeah. sealant in there. Yeah, so a little mm. bit um, of a trade-off in terms of the fact of it's not going to be like a super fast race tyre, it's going to be a little bit heavier. You've got a couple of different width options, so 25, 28, 32. I think 59.99 euros, I believe that is. But yeah, another option out there which is good for robustness, I guess. Mm. Cool. Um, we've also seen the launch of a new Pinarello. Yes. So many of you might have seen this already, but the new Dogma X has landed. So this is designed to be an endurance road bike um, and is intended for use by non-World Tour riders, yeah. whereas the, the Pinarello F is, and that series of bikes is like the performance road race bikes. This is a bit more relaxed. It's got bit, uh, more tyre volume, um, more tyre clearance, sorry. So it goes up to 35 millimetres and has more compliant features built into it, notably at the back where you've got this sort of truss design and... Well, I guess, I guess that's where they got the, the name X from. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So this is like an endurance bike, which is starting to encroach on that uh, like all-terrain kind of vibe that's going on. It's mm. become really popular, isn't it, this type yeah. of bike? Yeah, and they've, they've gone for that kind of trust thing at the back yeah. because they said that their engineers were exploring ways in which they could have a more simple way of introducing more comfort and compliance to the rear of the bike that wasn't as complicated as, do you remember like the mini shocks that they used to have in like the K9S? Yeah, I do yeah? remember that. that. Like they had at Paris-Roubaix. Um, so then like you try and get the idea and the advantages of that without needing that, which is kind of like a good thing. Um, I think you already mentioned 35 mil tire clearance. It's made from the T1100K Torre carbon mm -hmm. fibers. So that's the super bling stuff that is. Yeah. Um, as you've said, a little bit more relaxed geometry than the Dogma F, so we've got um, shorter top tube, a slightly taller um, stack, sorry. Yeah. Um, a few different options available. We've got entry level 105 Di2 all the way through to top spec Durace models. And I think a Durace model, is that right? Priced at £13,300, yeah, I believe. Yeah, but 105 Di2 one is 5700 So that's exactly... Under, under half price. Yeah, but that's exactly yeah. the, the thing that we were just talking about. Like that's that's yeah. a perfect example. So with all that savings, if you go for the 105 spec one, you go on all your cycling holidays. Yeah, job done. And we're actually gonna have a poll over on the GCN app where you can vote on this bike. To be it's hot, already up, hot or not. We've yeah. got it up. So go do it that now. And we'll leave a comment underneath that poll as well. Share your thoughts. On yeah, the let us know what you think. Mm. Next up. Shimano news. Yeah, right. Why, why did you not put this in the show last week? It's a pretty big deal. Well, basically, it's because we're part of the giant cycling Illuminati, and there's a big conspiracy theory for uh, us to obviously not say anything negative about Shimano. Nothing to the fact that he probably just filmed the show every week early before the story broke. Well, yeah, that's actually what really happened, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, no, the, uh, unfortunately, the tech show was filmed before this, this story broke. Um, and this is the news that Shimano, and it's a, it's a big deal, this, mm. have admitted that their Holotech 11-speed cranks have an issue and can fail and they can become unbonded and, and break apart. Um, so yes, unfortunately, this, this did break after we'd filmed the tech show last week, but they did bang it up straight away on our new news website. So a lot of you won't know about this yet because well, it's, well, new. it's new. But <laughs> if you go to globalcyclingnetwork.com, we have a full news site on there, and they were hot on the press um, with, with, with banging that out. And if you want to know if your crank set is affected by this... Because it doesn't affect all of them, does it? No. Uh, they have all the information on that news page. So we'll put a link to that in the description below so you can quickly get to it, and you can quickly work out if your cranks are affected, and if you, depending on where you live in the world, if you're able to actually get a replacement for that. It's a bit... It's like in a, it's different in America and yeah. Canada compared to what it is in Europe at the moment. Well, um, we've made you aware of it. Do the research relevant to where you live, basically. Yeah. And then finally, um, in hot tech, we've got some Zwift news because winter is coming, isn't it, Ollie? It's already here. Yeah, <laughs> I've ridden in the rain today. Did you ride in the rain that. the weekend? You've already mentioned. That. Well, that's how I'm still traumatized by it. I'm only just drying <laughs> no, out. No, I, I mean this is the thing. Like, I'm I'm a proper fair weather rider now. At the weekend, I had. Um, 
because I'm training for Taiwan KOM at the moment. Third year first. <laughs> I uh, just dropped that in. I um, had three hours to do on Sunday, and I just drew the curtains, and I was like, oh. Rain. So I just did three hours on Swift. Oh, go on, get in. Anyway, it's on Strava, you can check it out. Um, yeah, if, you, make, if you're that way. If you're it was not on Strava, it didn't happen, did it? Yeah, I see. Yeah. Um, so the Tour of Utopia is back. You're going to have five on-demand stages, and you're going to gain double XP. Tons of different um, swag to unlock. You can check, check off all the different stages um, by doing a ride on demand, or you can join a Tour of Utopia group ride. It's good, actually. I unlocked the Tron bike as well. Did you? Yeah, so next time we do a GCN <laughs> race in Zwift, yeah. present a race. You're going to bust out I've the Tron got, bike? I've got the Tron bike. I don't think any of the other presenters have got it yet. Absolutely not. No one else has got a Tron bike. <laughs> We're going to have to get that in some sort of rule, so you can't yeah, use it. I don't know. Anyway. I'm right, more hot tech next week. <laughs> Time now for comments of the week. Uh, play the man on rap. <laughs> Some people say the presenters are hilarious. Others appreciate the sights and tips they share with us. The fans are diverse from all around the world and the GCN team loves to give them a shout out. God, for God's sake. Right, comments under, underneath... I can't get my words out. Comments underneath... 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 Well, I was in Nice. Comments underneath last week's show. God, I can tell I've been on a holiday. I'm a bit Jesus. rusty. Jesus. Anyway, <laughs> uh, we were discussing the like what constitutes the ultimate adventure bike. Andrew McAllister, 3462, says, I'd love to see Ollie do a budget adventure bike build, but only on the condition that it's then Ollie that has to ride it truly somewhere adventurous. Yeah. I'm up for it. Yeah, why That'd not? be cool, yeah. Scott Gill, 9975, says a true adventure bike should have an internally geared hub or something like a pinion gearbox that has that is sealed and has a belt drive. I kind of agree with that. I'm, I'm in agreement, but as only under the condition that you can get easy enough gears with that system. And oh, I think that's yeah. something you might struggle with. Well, no, no the pinion gearboxes can go super, super low. Can range. they? Yeah, it just mm. it, it depends on the chainring of the sprocket you use. I'm talking on second-hand knowledge here because I've not used it myself. Right. Well, under our <laughs> inner tubes video, yeah. uh, Michael Clements, 4664, says, solid info here. You nailed it, this one. Um, I'm a latex tube guy myself. Man after my own heart, Michael. <laughs> um, pumping them daily is no big deal because it's so important to ensure tyre pressure is correct. I always did that daily, even when I used butyl tubes. Yeah, that is something I wish I'd kind of mentioned, because if you are a bike nerd, you're going to check your tyre pressures anyway. Yes. So it doesn't bother you if they go down a little bit overnight. Mm. Um, Neil uh, Danker. Nine Danker. Nine, nine Danker. It means no thank you. Oh, nine Danker. Auf Deutsch. 1629. Switch from butyl to TPU and love it. Price is higher, but if you compare it to other bike tech, this is probably by far the best upgrade Per dollar that I've found today, I've been riding over 500 kilometres with them um, as tyre and tube setup. There you go, we said it earlier, didn't we? Yeah, um, yeah. under our video on the aero bra, <laughs> um, James Bland, 8919, says, As a rider who weighs 97 kilos, I have my own built-in aerodynamic features. There's never an issue with filling the gap between my chest and thighs. <laughs> Big guys for the aero win. Yeah, also, pregnant ladies. More aero. Yeah. <laughs> I would have thought it. I had not thought of that. Nuts. Um, and Lee Brown, 3645, said, they don't pay me... I, I, this is what I said in the video. Can we play the clip? They don't pay me enough for this shit. Wait, what? You were getting paid? No. Oh, that's all right then. I thought, it was, I thought you were getting paid and I was just here for fun. No. <laughs> um... More comments next week. We love picking them out, so please write the best funny comments and then, well, you're featuring the tech show, can you? Which leads us on to the bike vault, which, as always, oh. it's my favourite part. Of the show. Where the, I've only been gone for a week. Where the bloody hell is the bell gone? Man Basically, on. you submit pictures of your bikes in the GCN app to the bike vault, and then people can vote on them whether they're nice or super nice, and we feature some of them in the show. But we have the final say. So, yeah. the most super nice bike last week from Bonnie Bonanza. Look at that Canyon Air Road. That's very nice, it's isn't it? It's the um, Alpacin... Uh, is it Alpacin de I forget what their team's are even called these days. Oh. It's the Team Colours version, isn't it? Uh, That's the, what yeah. they ride it. Alpacin... Alpacin de Kernic. No. Whatever. I don't anyway. even know cycling. <laughs> what do we think of the bike? <laughs> it, uh, it's super nice, I think. Yeah, yeah I'll I'm super nice that. that. Yeah. 
Saddle's very far forward. CFR as well. Um, fancy pants. Stingray 50 with a giant TCR next for 2022. Uh, gearing could be a lot better. Precariously laying up against um, this monument. Quite an impressive monument, to be fair. Yeah, it's a, a, a US, um, well, an American War of Independence uh, monument. It says, memorizes the War of 1812. Mm. Wow. Soldier buried along. Wow, there you go. Okay, there you go. Yeah. Um, what are we thinking of the bike then? Oh, do you know I what? don't think I could go super nice on this. If they'd aligned the valves and put it in Biggie Smalls, that's, that's a super nice every day of the week, including yeah. Sundays. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, nice. Nice. Really, really nice uh, giant though. Dim do one six. That's, like, that's the same model that I rode um, when we did Wales in a Day, Hank and I. Hmm. Really enjoyed the riding that bike. Bloody great. There you go. Um, sure it wasn't just the fact you got to ride with Hank. Well, I dropped him several times. <laughs> Dim, that was fun. Yeah. Dimdo 168 um, with a specialised S-Works Tarmac SL7. Where? Why have we cropped out oh, some of the cropped. wheels? Weird and cropped and like... Unbelievable colour though. Jaunty angle. Could be a super nice. Please try harder. Yeah. Nice. Nice. <laughs> Jackson uh, 5. Great name. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope... I hope... <laughs> As a group, they've submitted a bike. Yeah. I, why are there not five bikes? <laughs> Must be an error. Yeah. <laughs> like four big ones and then a small one. <laughs> right, come on. Yeah. Well, nice. Nice. Yeah. Big deep boy in the back. So though. much going wrong. We don't need to tell you what's going wrong there. You People already know. know. Yeah. Pathetic. Cranky Frankie next with a Lauf Siegler Race Wireless. Um, I'm currently been riding a Lauf actually because Lauf are supporting Chloe and I when we go to do the big sugar gravel race. Mm. Got to say, I'm enjoying riding that bike at the moment. I used one with the, the Lauf fork mm. like that at um, in Iceland at the Grift years ago. Did years. you enjoy it as well? Um, brilliant. Yeah, good for comfort. Yeah. Um, so what do we make of the bike? I am gonna I'm gonna throw it out there. Super nice for me. Yeah. I love the colour. Yeah, I mean that. I mean, it does need a bit of Ron Seal that fence, doesn't it? But and the angle's a little bit jaunty. Valves are not quite aligned. Uh, but I'm willing to let this slide because I like the colour. I like the I'm, Apertura I'm, bag. I'm liking it. I like that top tube bag. It looks really the way it's, it's bolted on and it's no straps and it, I think it's really nice. Um, yeah, there we go. Next up is Null. <laughs> Username TBC. We'll pop it up on screen. Oh, it's a, cool it's a dream up. build, Colnago Master. Apparently, it weighs just 7.6 kilograms. Not verified. <laughs> yeah, allegedly <laughs> weighs 7.6 kilograms. But having said that, it has got AX Lightness wheels on it. Yeah. Super record crank set, gold chain. Boom. Not in Biggie Smalls. Um, AX Lightness saddle, seat okay, post. It's probably going to be light. Yeah. Stem. So yeah, and it looks like it's very, very like rim brakes on it. That is a super, super nice bike, but... It could be presented You're just presenting better. it. Like, where where even have you taken that picture in, like, a dungeon? Imagine putting all of that effort into building such a cool bike. And then just and going... And going, oh, I'll get a picture oh, quick. Yeah, guys, whatever. chuck it there. Yeah. Yeah. Don't care about Alex and Ollie. Rubbish. Yeah. Well, sorry, it's nice from us. That is our last bike vault of this week. Mixed feelings and emotions about this week's bike vault, if I'm honest, after yeah. being on holiday. Um, You've got to present your bike in, the, in, in a good light. Certainly when it's like a top spec fancy bike. Yeah. There's margin for error in entry level bikes. Yeah. Top spec ones, no margin for error. And um, right, we'll be back next week when we do tech show on tour from Mallorca. Tune in and we'll um, see you there, shall yeah. we? Yeah, if you're in Mallorca next week and you see us, come and say hi. Yeah, wave, buy us a coffee. <laughs> see you later. <laughs> he doesn't get paid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs>